51 euro 50. Who's got clever travel insurance? Sale ends 30th of June. Online value price covers one adult under 50 to Europe. AA Ireland Limited. Trading as AA Insurance is regulated by the Central Bank of Ireland. AA Insurance is tied to interpartner assistance for the purpose of selling travel insurance. The Saturday panel on Off the Ball. Thanks to Screwfix.ie. Championing the trade with a choice of over 20,000 quality trade products. You're very welcome back to Saturday's Off the Ball. It's time for our Saturday panel, and I'm delighted to be joined in studio by former Mayo footballer David Brady, by the Irish Independence GEA correspondent Colm Keyes, and by All Ireland winning Galway footballer John Divley, and a former Kildare player as well. And I guess, really, if we're looking at Gaelic football at the moment, there's only one place to start, Colm, and what a week it was. Funnily enough, we had a Saturday panel uh, last week about the football qualifiers, and we're kind of saying there's been no great controversy. The first month, six weeks of the championship have been dominated by hurling. There's been nothing really to get us overly excited. And then it all blew up on Monday, really, I think, when Keane O'Neill went on 6-1 and said, it is Newbridge or nowhere, we're not going to be in Crow Park on Saturday night. Were you surprised as to how it escalated, as to how big an issue it became? Uh, I probably was, because I, I didn't think the GA, having entrenched themselves in such a position to say uh, it'll be Crow Park or nowhere, or this will be played on Saturday night at 7 with or whatever, it, it, that Mayo will get the game and that this game is going ahead and there will be no change. Uh, I was surprised at that, uh, that they that they did back down in many respects because there was a lot at stake for them and they are weakened by it. There is no question by that they are weakened by it and have probably have probably misread the situation. Even though even though their 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 reasoning, you know, health and safety didn't mm. stack up in the end, but uh, their reasoning, I'm sure it was genuine, but uh, at the in the end they've just misread it and didn't see that the the will of the people and the Kildare people to get a game at home at their at their home venue was was stronger than anything. And uh, we've just mentioned there that Keane O'Neill uh, going on the six one news. Well, more powerful words he probably has never spoke. It feels as though there's a lot of injustices within the GEA at the moment from home advantage for certain counties being taken away from them, from the time constraints being put on inter-county players, from the lack of competitiveness in, in Leinster championships, feeding all the way down to the club players, not having any championship games through the summer. Is it all starting to boil up now? Is it, are we going to... F have, have almost Kildare set a precedent that actually, if you do take on the GEA, sometimes you can win? Yeah, well, they have they have proved they have proved that, and you know, Kildare would be a county perhaps accused of not having a, a strong backbone uh, in the past, maybe on the field of play, uh, but they really, really showed defiance here, and by with their with their stance, and you know, they they had to they had to honour their their patrons down in the, their business people in Newbridge and their supporters in in many respects, even though a lot of them won't get in to see the game, but. Mm. Uh, advertise around. They had to pitch for that, and having been turned over in 2012, you know they were they weren't happy with that. Having to go down to Port Leash and come into Crow Park uh, in the past, they felt it was worth making a stand, and uh, they triumphed in that regard. And it is a significant turning point in in many ways. You have to look at it like that. The way it has uh, the way it has rolled out. Were the GEA not right though that? Newbridge and St. Conlon's Park simply isn't up to holding a championship game where there's going to be a demand probably for 15, 20,000 tickets. It can only hold 8,000. It's ramshackle. It's been described as a bit of a kit by certain people. And regardless of what it does for the local community, and we don't want players being punished for the mistakes of county boards, likewise with Waterford and Walsh Park, ultimately, if the ground's not up to it, tough. The ground probably isn't up to it. I don't think there's any disputing that. There are, I stand to be corrected here, but I think there's around 400 seats in, in St. Conrad's Park. I can't think of too many other grounds uh, at that standard or any that have that few seats. Uh, it's not in great shape. I think anyone, and we know from stepping off the, the stand there, it is a very, very slow departure mm -hmm. off the stand in St. Conrad's Park. Uh, it's a very narrow walkway at the, front of the, at the front of the stand. There's a lot of things that go against it, but the principle of having a home venue was was honoured here, even though the reasons are, and health and safety was put out. And I found it strange that health and safety uh, became okay on a Wednesday morning uh, when it was uh, it was quite clear that that was the reason, or that was being put forward as the reason on on Monday. And I think the lesson maybe for the GA here is maybe fixtures can be made on a Wednesday morning. Now mm. we've we've seen that these two fixtures were put out to different venues on a Wednesday morning, three or four days beforehand. So. 
you have to ask why the rush? Why not take a little bit more time? And well, that was asked as well when when Alan Milton was on representing the GA well, during not? the week. Why that not? They were why under pressure from several parties, and and you're right. But why not take some why time? Why not and take go more time and, and talk to all do. the stakeholders, talk to Kildare, and really, you know, really assess their will to play in front of their uh, in assess their will to play at home at the expense of leaving many of their supporters mm. out on the streets and at home watching it on television and, and wherever else they will watch it. Uh, that's a decision that Kildare made and ultimately it was their right. And while uh, CCCC have some fallback on health and safety grounds, someone passed this to be an 8,200 capacity. Uh, the GA's own health and safety presumably committee presumably passed, passed this to go with a reduced capacity of 8,200. And at that stage, Kildare, entitled to home venue, said, yes, we'll play it there. We want to play it there. And ultimately, it was, it was their right to do so. I, I think on, on the back of that, too, the, the Monday decision and Wednesday decision, I think the teams themselves need to know at least five days before a game, never mind, you know, a Monday to a Saturday, but a Wednesday to a Saturday, not knowing where you're playing, what pitch, what travel arrangements, what hotels, what overnight accommodation. You, you, you wouldn't get that um, all done within from a Wednesday evening once that, or Wednesday afternoon once the decision well, was made. Well, I would say, right, not Wednesday evening, but certainly maybe Monday evening. I mean, yeah. This decision was made yeah. at a noon meeting, mm -hmm. noon meeting, and, you know, again, made probably in, in, in good faith, and I know people will say, well, it was about money and it was about sky and all of these, these things. It probably ultimately was about capacity and facilities and mm. those who make the fixtures know that St Condon's Park is not in good shape and it's not the most pleasurable venue to go and watch a game. But it's Kildare's venue and in accordance with the rule, even though there is fallback on health and safety grounds, they didn't stand up in the end because obviously this was teased out and the stakeholders, whether the guards or the health and safety committee said, no, it's okay at this. But why can't we sit down in April or May and say, these are the stadiums that are going to host matches during this championship. St. Conlet's Park has been passed. It's a capacity of 8,200. Whether you're playing Leitrim or whether you're playing Dublin, you're home games, but that's the maximum capacity. And I don't care how many season ticket holders you have, you're just going to have to suck it up. Some people aren't going to get in if you want to maintain your home advantage. Well, we may see that because every, every crease in the, in the GA is eventually ironed out in some way and more creases appear here. I mentioned on, on one of the programmes here a few, a few weeks back, there is a complaint for every day of the week in the GA, and you could start on January the 1st and say, well, what's the complaint there? What's the issue here? And you can go right through the year, and there's one for every every day every day of the year, it seems. And here's another one now is capacities. But there was a principle at stake here for Kildare mm. too. And I, I felt that was ultimately what, what pushed them over the line and hardened and the resolve and the support that they got, even at the expense of people not seeing it tonight. John, you're... Keeping quiet over there in the corner as a former Kildare player, I'm sure you were in conversation with a lot of your former teammates and a lot of people down there over the course of the week. What was your take on it all? Um, I'm just glad it's 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 over and that there's a game to look forward to this evening. Um, it comes down to what happens on the field now. I mean, there's been so many mistakes made by uh, fixtures committee uh, for the last number of years. You know, there was a big one made that I was involved with in the Sigerson final was fixed the same day as the club's uh, All-Ireland semi-finals and uh, I asked at the time that maybe the new president might come in and talk to uh, you know potential colleges about next year's Sigerson competition so we're still waiting on you know maybe an invitation and with that so and I won't hold my breath on that you know um, we're just too slow and we just hope these problems go away and you know we'll, we'll deal with a different problem next year but look it is what it is um, I think everybody in the country um, we're happy that Kildare kept their home advantage. Facilities wise, you know, it's a wake up call for every county. You know, we have the same problem in, in Tum Stadium at the moment. We have a fantastic playing service, but very, very poor infrastructure. Um, and we give out that all the games go to Pierce Stadium. It has to go to Pierce Stadium uh, because we don't have the proper facilities in Tum. It's the same in Newbridge. I mean, Newbridge hasn't been done up in years. So it's a wake up call to Kildare County Board and other county boards all around the country, if you want to stage home games in the future, you better be ready, otherwise it'll be taken off you. This wasn't the first game in this year's championship that wasn't played by a team at their home venue, so Waterford will be the obvious one, similar issues with Walsh Park, even though we were talking during the week and maybe they could have got it up to a capacity of seven or 8,000, and we know how important home advantage has been during the hurling round robin. But even looking back at the Leinster championship this year, right from the first round, Louth against Carlo, Offaly against Wicklow was played at a double header 
at O'Moore Park. It doesn't seem to make any sense. Uh, Leinster have Leinster Council retained the right to uh, to schedule matches where they want. This was different. This was different in the rule book. It says that. Uh, first team out gets home venue mm. in the first three rounds of the qualifiers so that was the difference here Leinster retained the right to uh, unless it's home and away between the counties they they retain the right and Kildare hasn't hosted a, a Leinster championship match since 1995 and it's obvious why that the you know Leinster feel the ground isn't the ground isn't up to it and they're not bound by the same rule as uh, as Crow Park was here so it, that was ultimately the difference. I want to play a clip of uh, Ned Quinn, who is the chairman of the CCCC, and he was on OTBAM a little bit earlier in the week, and it uh, it escalated pretty quickly during the week. This situation from from six one, and we don't actually have that clip at the moment of Ned Quinn. But but listen, he, he, I don't need overall, anybody yeah. any favors with his comments because I think the GA at that stage had sort of bunkered down and weren't saying anything, and suddenly he appears and says, "Well." This problem with season tickets, there may, be, there may be an atmosphere outside that people won't like, where people are going to turn up with their children, expecting that they'll get in, they won't be able to, we just can't control that, which didn't really help anybody. And the, the GEA, I guess, will, you would assume, and maybe I'm completely wrong, Colin, will have to have learned a lot of lessons from this week as to how they talk to the GEA public. Was 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 he nominated as a spokesman? I he's the chairman of the of the C of CCCC. C -C. Yeah, he's the he's the chairman since the new president came in. So that that was uh, he he obviously would have chaired the meeting to uh, to fix this game. But uh, in with regard to that, I think they will probably draw breath a little bit and and maybe take their time a little bit more and discuss with counties and maybe just. Maybe just test the waters a, a, a little bit, mm. uh, a little bit. I mean, they are experienced people in, in mm. fixing games and uh, can read and can predict pretty accurately what a crowd is going to be. I mean, the you know the the projection was that this would be an eighteen to twenty thousand uh, game yeah. between Kildare and uh, Mayo, and that probably stands up because the interest in both counties is huge, and it's even more now. You you ask any team, and it's okay. I have a bias, but if you ask any team. To, to, to gauge the Mayo support, whether it's down in Limerick or down in Tipperary, mm. where they have eight or 9,000 travelling people. And you're going to yourself, now, like Monday morning, the fixture was made. I know people that booked hotels um, with no cancellation in Dublin. Now, they weren't in season ticket holders. So they don't get the, they don't get the game, they won't get a ticket, and they don't get their hotel. Um, and to have, to have 4,500 um, season ticket holders now seems to be a, a disadvantage to Mayo when you're saying there's going to be 10,000 people that would have travelled not going to the game. It comes back to, you know, it was Kildare's call and Keane O'Neill was dead right. You know, he, he said probably in his own head, where's, where's our best chance of beating Mayo this evening? Newbridge or Crow Park? And it is Newbridge. And I mean, everything will still have to go so, so right for Kildare this evening to, to, to win. They have a better chance down there. And I'd say, now that he has won that battle for the players, for the right to play at home, they have to deliver for, for themselves and, and for him. Otherwise, it, it's kind of all in vain. Oh, without a doubt. The man says they, they, have, um, they have a serious opportunity. And again, as we're talking outside, the start of the game is going to dictate a, a massive amount of what, of what who's going to come out of that, uh, that battle. But it's, um, it, was a, it was a big call. I, I do think that Crow Park got some things right. And what? they changed. To change their mind, they didn't come out and say we think this. And I, I think, as someone says, that the, uh, a, a very good lesson in PR is saying nothing, and that's what they did. They talked. Um, they got Kildare to cancel their um, press conference. Was it on uh, Wednesday evening or Tuesday evening? Tuesday. Tuesday. Evening. And said, you know what? Let's discuss it. Maybe they're not going to come out. And how, how many of us do come out and say, hands up, look at, I got it wrong. I'm sorry. But they listened. Um, is it a first? Yeah, I, I don't think it's it's I don't think it's a bad thing to say. Oh, the one that it's not. A, I think we're 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 fighting an internal battle, and Crow Park seems to be the big bad wolf. And I'm going. We are. We're. You know, the word Crow Park. I think has been has been sullied, um, because now you think of Crow Park and people think, oh, it's these guys up in their in their plush offices doing this. They're they're good, honest, genuine people. I think Tom Ryan, who I've never met, never talked to, I think it was a good sign or a good indication because in the, the day boys, he's the boss and I think his role in it was very, um, very silent.
but I think it says it says a lot as well. You, you don't want to personalise it, and there are a lot of good people working in that organisation, there yeah. and there's no question about that, but they also have a job to do. And Colin Fergal McGill coming out and saying, if Kildare don't show up in Crow Park on Saturday at 7 o'clock, the game is going to be awarded to Mayo. That seemed, felt like it really threw a grenade on the situation. Well, I felt that, re- that, that entrenched it, no, yeah. no doubt about it, and I felt when it wasn't, uh, when uh, it didn't change by Tuesday evening. <coughs> that I felt maybe it wouldn't because I would have made the assumption that well when's is too late to make a call on this and ultimately it was made in, on, on a Wednesday and as I said earlier in the programme it, you know, it proves that maybe no rush is needed on a Monday you mm. know, tease these things out work it out It felt on Monday afternoon that it was a sort of sports story that it was something that would be covered on, on radio shows like this and on the sports pages but then when Keen O'Neill went on 6-1 it exploded it was a masterstroke it turned out from Keen O'Neill because suddenly he got everybody within the GEA family behind him and he'd been under huge pressure we spoke about it last week that Kildare have had a, a nightmare season until their last win in the qualifier he, it, it feels as though it, maybe it was a, a landmark moment for him and Kildare maybe so but maybe results tonight <laughs> result tonight may dictate otherwise but certainly uh, pe- you know he was uh, he, he came out of it with enormous credit uh, for a manager who was under pressure and the feeling was that uh, you know, and his next defeat would be his last as Kildare manager. That's certainly certainly the feeling. Uh, but you know, if the game hadn't been played, it would be very very hard to turn around and say to Keane O'Neill at that stage, "Well, we're we're changing," mm. because really, uh, he ramped it up on on Monday evening for sure and spoke very well. Do you think he has set an example that we're going to see repeated in coming years? Well, of, we did see it with, with Kevin McStay. Out. Only it came mm. to it came to nothing, and Kevin McStay was equally. Uh, as defiant uh, prior to the uh, prior to the Connacht final that this game would be played in Hyde Park. Now uh, that was wasn't so much that wasn't so much uh, um, a capacity that wasn't a capacity issue really. It was a, it was a ticketing and a scanning mm. issue, and there was one point of egress uh, that's departure out of the back of the stand that was causing causing problems and something that they be, they've been told they'll maybe have to fix in the future if they want to host a game of that size again. Uh, but Kevin McStay was, we'll be here on the day of the Connacht final and maybe maybe uh, if it's Galway, maybe they'll be somewhere else. But this is where we will be. And ultimately, his firm stance uh, forced Connacht Council to, well, to get negotiating and accepting that th- there is a way around this. And so we, we have seen it twice. Yeah, and we may have another stormer brewing ahead of the Super 8s with Donegal, which we'll come to in a couple of moments' time. But we're getting a lot of texts in. Serves Kildare right. Why did they not build on their All-Ireland final appearance in ninety eight and build a decent stadium? They have the population, Jim and Wexford. Certainly, that's... that's but. That's in, that's in the past. They have plans in for 7.5 million, 15,000 seater stadium. And I think what we've seen this week is the, the need for that to press ahead as quickly as possible. Kildare is a big county. I mean, people would say, oh, the small man gets turned over. Kildare should not be seen as a small man in, in Gaelic football or in GA terms. It's a big county. Um, there's a Does big population. As a, a, lot, small man, a, lot, a lot of interest. There's a lot of interest. There. Okay, their record isn't good over the years. That's that's for sure. But there's a lot of interest in the game there. Uh, there's a lot of things happening, and uh, really they need a stadium that that befits that. And certainly, fifteen thousand would be would be very adequate. And you know, it was put out there that the GA, if they that because of Kildare's defiant stand, uh, you know, the GA may be a lot slower to help them with the redevelopment of Conlans Park. Well, I would say, on the contrary, they should be. Uh, you know, really putting the foot to the floor to mm. get Kildare sorted. And there are a number of other venues around the Leinster and there's Park Talton and Navin. You know, there's Pierce uh, Pierce Park in, in, in Longford as well. And this could potentially throw up other problems with Super 8s if any of these teams in the future uh, get home venues. So mm. the sales pitch that you get a home venue for the uh, Super 8s, uh, it's a, on a little bit of thin ice now because of that. And also with Walsh Park, we have seen that. Although Walsh Park, we mentioned Walsh Park earlier, uh, there could have been remedial work done on Walsh Park in Waterford, but it would have cost a lot of money to bring that up to health and safety. There was a knocking of a wall, from what I recall, a knocking of a wall, and certain things would have to have been done that would have cost Waterford County Board between 400,000, 500,000. I think they were, they were the issue at stake there. Okay. So they said, look, we'll get this sorted for next year, uh, which, which they may or may not but we just have to go with this for now. And Waterford made that decision ultimately because they were never going to get, the, they were never going to get that work done on time or within, within that. That's, a, that's pretty steep for a temporary measure. 
We're getting a lot of texts in. We'll get to those after the break. You're listening to the Saturday panel brought to you this afternoon with Screwfix.ie, championing the trade with a choice of over 20,000 quality trade products. We might even get to talk some football as well. The Saturday panel on Off the Ball. Thanks to Screwfix.ie, championing the trade with a dedicated call centre. Join the conversation. Text us on 53106. Texts cost 30 cent. Looking for an amazing, affordable place to stay in Galway this summer? Then book into Sweet Boho More. Self-catering and one-bed apartments, just 10 minutes walk from Air Square. With 24-hour reception and free parking, Sweet Boho More is the perfect base for the Arts Festival, the Galway Races, or just to enjoy the crack. Find us on Facebook at SWUITE.com. Talk and text 200. Unlimited plan. Freedom unlimited plan. Freedom unlimited plan plus. Data dazzler. Double data dazzler. We get it. There is such a thing as too much choice. That's why at Carphone Warehouse, we offer you the latest smartphones, best plans, and all the networks under one roof with the expert advice you need to help you make the right choice for your lifestyle. Oh, and did we mention we save you money? Leave the hard work to us. Your choice. Any network, any phone, any plan. Only Carphone Warehouse. Look at you, lying there, half naked, on your laptop. And why wouldn't you? The midsummer sale is on at appliancesdelivered.ie. While everyone else is looking for parking in some retail park, you're on a sun lounger, lashing on the Factor 50 and ordering bargains online. Getting up to 20% off barbecues, up to 45% off vacuum cleaners, and up to 25% off washing machines. Plus the lowest prices guaranteed. The midsummer sale ends soon at appliancesdelivered.ie. Summer just got hotter. Warning, summer may not actually have gotten hotter. Usual Irish weather terms and conditions apply. Hi, I'm Brendan Cabinet, CEO of GDPRcourse.com. GDPR became law on Friday, May 25th. Are you worried that your business, volunteer organization or club is at risk of being fined? We now run daily accredited GDPR practical implementation courses at our nationwide training facilities. This course gives members of your organization tasked with GDPR the practical tools to implement and maintain GDPR compliance. Don't get ripped off by expensive consultants. Go to GDPRcourse.com. At Cash and Carry Kitchens, we're giving away Nord Mende appliances free with some of our best-selling kitchens. So select one of our best-selling kitchens, then pick the Nord Mende appliances of your choice worth up to a staggering €1,000. There are over 50 Nord Mende appliances to choose from, including dishwashers, ovens, fridges and hobs. Call into any Cash and Carry Kitchens showroom nationwide and ask for details. Or go online to cashandcarrykitchens.ie. Terms and conditions apply. Bruce Betting are one of Ireland's leading bookmakers. Download the iOS app today to see why Bruce Betting are giving you more for World Cup 2018. Bruce Betting, your World Cup bookmaker. In store, online, and now on your phone. Please gamble responsibly. See dunlewy.net. Here at Kia, we really have nothing to add to our renowned quality and award-winning design. Nothing that is but 0% finance on many of our leading 182 models. There's 0% finance on the Sportage, 0% finance on the Seed Range, and on our new crossover, the Kia Stonic. See your local Kia dealer or visit kia.com, home of the seven-year warranty. Lending criteria and terms and conditions apply. This is a hard purchase agreement provided by Bank of Ireland Finance, a registered trading name of Bank of Ireland. We all want to build a better health service, and to do that, we need to hear from people using our services day to day. All adults who finish to stay in a general hospital during May are being invited to share their experience by taking part in the National Patient Experience Survey. Patients will be contacted after they leave hospital and invited to take part. For more information, visit patientexperience.ie. From the HSE, the Health Information and Quality Authority and the Department of Health. The Saturday panel on Off the Ball. Thanks to Screwfix.ie. Championing the trade with a choice of over 20,000 quality trade products. You're welcome back to the Saturday panel, joined in the studio by David Brady, Colm Keyes and John Divoli. 53106 is the text number. We're live on all our social channels as well, so you can leave a comment on Facebook, on YouTube or on Twitter. Tom McKevitt watching on Facebook Live says, It's 2018, the ground is 60 standard. Uh, text in from Dave the Dub, health and safety my ass. Take a look at Hill 16 when dubs are playing. Walkways jammed, they pack dubs in the yellow walkway. Steps never clear, it's a complete joke. Lads, the root of the problem here is the ground itself and the fact that the GEA as an organisation who have any amount of money don't seem to pass that around to upgrade grounds around the country to make them capable of holding a championship match from Damien and Mayo. 
There have been, been no problem with health and safety this evening in Newbridge. But it just shows we're, that the, we're, your health and safety might be under threat, I feel. Well, well, my health and safety, but there's two and a half thousand um, stewards in place. <laughs> It just shows what free tickets. Free tickets, yeah. Oh, we got a bibs. In infrastructure is one of the GA's biggest challenges over the next ten years, uh, not just at county level but at club level. Uh, that the enormous numbers uh, coming into the game at juvenile level, mm. and the closer and greater links, and the the speed at which ladies football is developing too, it's putting pressure on club pitches. There's not enough room. You're sending out all the coaching coaches right across the country who are bringing more people into the game, but ultimately for clubs, there's going to be nowhere to put them and facilitate them. And with the ladies game growing and, and as I said, links getting getting closer. And we see infrastructure as an issue. And we mentioned the counties, Walsh Park, uh, with more inter-county games and home venue now enshrined uh, in rule, obviously, with the with the qualifiers and with the, the home quarter final. Uh, that creates a greater need for better stadia in these counties. So it's a huge challenge. And how does the GA support that? Well, through money. So that creates, that's, that's the other great argument. This is why deals are done with uh, other broadcast companies that may not be palatable for a lot of people. This is why probably there are more games. And you know, people say it shouldn't be about the money. Well, at some stage, it has to be about some money too. If you're going to upgrade these grounds and if you're going to be able to support clubs, to be able to facilitate, because Shaking a bucket in some of the provincial towns in Ireland where the game is growing is not, is not that easy. It's not that easy for some clubs in some areas to fundraise. And that's, that's a challenge. And that's where the GA needs, needs money to be able to support them. But it's not very popular to say that sometimes. But that is a reality. Mm -hmm. The problem is, Flo, you know, any bit of green grass around towns is being used to build houses. So the population is growing day by day. What needs to happen is every club needs to get a second pitch in their grounds, but it's not possible. So like it's, it's a bigger issue than what we think. It's okay down the countryside where there's plenty of land to build a second pitch. We don't need second pitches down the countryside. We need players. Dublin, Kildare, Cork, you know, all these big counties with city clubs, they need land to build a second pitch. They don't have it. So it's, it's not just a GEA problem, it's a, it's a problem for the country as a whole. We need a sports strategy that's looking at counties like Dublin, Kildare, Cork in a different way that they're looking at Mayo, Roscommon, Leitrim and assessing their needs, giving them what they want. How do we get population back to those parts? How do we get facilities where there is the population already? It, it's not an easy fix. No, it's not. When, I'm just go, To go back from a GA point of view, if you look at the cool camps, which are to bring kids in at entry level. Now, there are some established players in there, but to bring them in at entry level, and it's gone up from 80,000 up to 140,000 something in the, in the space of a few years. How do you convert that back into club, for, club players at ladies? And where do you put those extra numbers? And that's a, I, I just think it's a huge challenge over the next 10 years. And here we are talking about uh, Kildare, St. Conlad's Park, and no doubt at some stage in the future, it'll be back to the uh, loud situation, Park Talton and Navan, Walsh Park, and on, and on we go to be able to provide spectator comfort and ease uh, for uh, every ground in the country. Uh, one county ground in the country is, is a real challenge. Yeah, and we might come back to that and, and have a look at that on a, another Saturday panel over the coming weeks. But the next potential controversy may be just down the track. So we're two weeks away from the Super 8s. It's a Crow Park weekend. We're going to have Galway against Kerry. We're going to have Dublin against Donegal. And we have an interview with Declan Boner, the Donegal manager, coming up just after 4 o'clock where we talk about Jim McGuinness been in, giving the squad a pre-championship pep talk, his reaction to Paddy McBrearty's season-ending injury. And also I asked him if the Dublin game should be played in Crow Park or whether they would like it played at a neutral venue. <laughs> Well, listen, Nathan. Looking at it, it's um, basically it, it's meant to be one away and one at home and one at a, a neutral venue. It's from from a Donegal perspective, we're ending up playing two away games, and Dublin will have two two home games, and uh, through no fault of their own. That's I mean, it's not it's not a case of the, the Dublin. It's this is what what was laid out. But uh, I think you know, for for all eight teams, it's got to be the one playing field, and I don't think it's it's that leveled. If you have to play two matches away from home, and as I say, one other team has two two home games, so I think you know the CC. They, I don't think these these or these fixtures are going to be set. Or maybe they are set in stone, but I think in terms of um, I think maybe in fairness to the whole eight teams, it's going to be in that super eight that they're all they're all playing on 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 the one pitch. And at the minute, there seems to be a slight uh, edge towards Dublin. The fact that they have two home games, and, and basically we're ending up with two away games. 
I'm sure it's something that comes up around the dressing room when you're at training. And we've seen this week that when teams and when players do take a stand, that maybe for the first time ever the GEA have had to listen and maybe it has set some sort of a precedent. Is this something that the squad have spoken about, that we want this game played at a neutral venue or do you just have to suck it up and turn up in Crow Park in a couple of weeks' time? Well, I mean, listen, in terms of, <laughs> we speak about fairness, in terms of about fairness, I think, you know, if you do, if you were, Donegal would have played Dublin and someone said the game's going to be played at the neutral venue, then you would expect somewhere like Cavan, like Clonus, like, you know, at a neutral venue, not going into Dublin's backyard to play a match, which is a so-called neutral match. But, uh, listen, now the players, in fairness, when we get back in this week, it's just about getting the heads down and getting back at it. So we leave that to, to, to the authorities to, to, to deal with that there. Yeah. And I'm sure, listen, the CCC will, I mean, as I say, the fixtures are still to be to come out, and I presume the CCC will be sitting, and I'm sure they'll, they'll take note of, of that there. And I know there's been a fair amount of talk in the media during the week about it. And uh, so we'll wait and see what, what exactly is going to happen. But... Uh, I think maybe in the, in the interest of, of fair play and maybe a bit of common sense, then let's have a look at it. Declan Bonner, that full interview coming up at four o'clock. The word from Crow Park earlier in the week was that this is not a weekend of neutral fixtures. It's a weekend of Crow Park fixtures, that when it was voted through Congress, that all the counties were made fully aware of this. But John, in the interests of fairness, in the interests of integrity, should this game be played out of Crow Park? Probably should be. Uh, but again, as Declan Bonner says, it's, it's not a Donegal or Dublin problem. Uh, they just have to play where they're told. So again, it comes back to the fixture makers in Crow Park, and they would have known about this a long, long time ago. So, I mean, look, there's lessons to be learned for next year, and Super 8 is an evolving competition. They're going to hopefully take stock of what happens in the next two months um, and just tweak it again for next year. So, look, right now, all Donegal can do is, you know, get somebody nice and ready for Paddy McBearty's spot and concentrate in a game of football. That's what it's all about. Donegal, I love to play uh, Dublin and Crow Park. They had a cracking game against them here in the National League with loads of young lads and they've developed and moved on since then. So um, there's no point in worrying about it now or over-talking about it now. It, it won't change this year. But, like, it's, it's not Dublin's fault either. You know Declan Bonner yeah. there's a, there's right a, at the start. But there's a certain amount of gamesmanship and brinkmanship and, you know, what's your... What's your, your, your your media or communication strategy and you're going to throw it out there and I think they'll have to decide. Well, there's that. no harm in Declan Boner throwing it, this out there. No, Worst case scenario, they're turning up in Crow Park anyways and you've yes. all the Donegal support riled up. And you know what? Alan Brogan asked me during the week, did I ever once think that I was going playing Dublin in their home in their home pitch? And I didn't when I was playing in Crow Park. That's, it's, for me personally. Uh, has that not changed that's, over the last decade, changed, 15 that's years? With the, with the spring series. The, yeah. the, the fact that Dublin have moved their Constant. home, their home yeah. league matches to Crow Park. That has and, been, and, yeah. And ultimately, and while they probably would win as many or close to as many games, uh, as close to as many games in Parnell Park, they certainly wouldn't win them by as much. No. And, and I suppose that there is, there, look, there's no doubt there is an issue there that the perception is that this is Dublin's home ground, but it's the, it's the GA's headquarters, and that was the reasoning and the thinking behind, I'm sure. What surprises me is that the Croke Park games are on first. Mm. I would have thought that provincial, as provincial champions, provincial champions would be entitled to a home match first. The fact that Donegal, their reward for beating everybody else in Ulster was into Croke Park to play Dublin. Now, in the current climate of Dublin's dominance, that's probably the toughest pill to swallow. And that's their reward. And their reward after that could be potentially a trip to Healy Park to play Tyrone. It could be it could be Clonus. Whatever way the draw works out, we don't know. But Monaghan, Mayo and Tyrone could potentially come through this weekend and put themselves in position where Donegal would have to go to one of those venues. Their second game now, is they could definitely be, away from home. So they start with yes, two away games. So they start with two away games. Uh, according to the revised. Now, it, uh, there was a difference in the GA diary, but it's changed back to uh, that the provincial champions play their home game last. And uh, I would have thought that thinking should be maybe first, that these games first. Now, maybe it was a case that they didn't want, that the idea there could be uh, dead, dead rubbers in Crow, Park. in Crow Park could have been the issue. But the reward should have been on the first weekend, uh, provincial champions at home. Because Donegal could conceivably be out of the championship 
after two games. Probably yeah, the main reason, though. Played. Probably the main reason the first rounds are in Crow Park is that Michael Bublé is playing on the 17th of July. So I oh, don't start, John. No, <laughs> no but it, would you see this is probably it. Crow Park don't want managers giving out that the pitch wasn't up to scratch the following week. So they say, play it, get it out of the way, and, and it's done and dusted, and the concert can take place. That is probably the real reason, but obviously that. I, I think it was probably just it's you know they, they wanted everything centralised for a really big start to the uh, to the Super Eights. Now. It can change next year, and there can even be a clause to bring in to accommodate to say that they will be played. This the Crow Park round will be played at Crow Park or a neutral venue. Mm. But as the rules stand, and as it's written in from last year's Congress, uh, there's a Crow Park match for Dublin, and there's a home match for Dublin. Now there's no declaration of a home venue, and their home venue, you know, by anyone's estimation. Is Crow Park. Well, there's not a hope in hell they're going to play That's where they play their league. No, and like you go to yourself, if you've got, if you're, no matter who you have, you're going to have 60 or 70 thousand at it. There's no other stadium in the country that can facilitate that. Now, I, I say, it's the field of dreams, and it's, if you want to beat Dublin, you have to play them on a pitch, and it's Crow Park. So be it. But the one thing that I, I, I don't think is right, and Alan Brogan did agree with me, is every single time Dublin get to play in Crow Park, they come out first, they get to pick their warm up, and. On the basis that their name in Irish is that well, that's the that's what what is what is told an, that they get the same dressing room at the at the at the Hill End because it's oddly and oh, that's, yeah. that's it, never it, been confirmed it, or anything. Is that is that not where the big difference will be if this was a neutral venue that yes. Dublin are out of their routine? Yeah. They don't get to stay in their own beds the night before. They'd have to go down. Well, if they were in Clonus, they might have to travel down the night before. I think that, yeah, a fair way is to, to toss. I don't think first Dublin would, any, for, would have for any issue with that. I, yeah. I, I just don't think they have any issue with that. I I, I, w I wouldn't imagine so, but. Uh, the fact is, they have the choice of a home venue, and that could be anywhere. I would have thought the home venue does not uh, does not put you into Parnell Park just because that's where that's where head, their headquarters are. Home venue, could, could, I would imagine, it's a choice of where you want to play. The fact is, though, lads, it doesn't matter where you play Dublin. They're currently the best team in the country, and for aspiring players around the country that want to win major honours, you're going to have to come up against Dublin at some time. And if you go, if you have that attitude before you start, you might as well not come to Crow Park to play Dublin or go anywhere to play Dublin. I really don't buy into that. But is the novelty not worn off for the top players of playing games at Crow oh, Park at this stage? No, not at all. No. I mean, how yeah, many times? If you're lucky, like, you might get nine or ten games in Crow Park. You know, in your in your career, maybe you might get a few more. So not at all. You ask the Carlo lads, the Leash lads, they'd come up against Crow Park next week if they're still in a competition. So if you had a choice and say next year changed and Mayo won Connacht and it was Mayo against Dublin and it's either Crow Park or you play it in Tullamore, halfway house? I'd, I'd pick Crow Park. That's, it's, it's, well, it's from my own perspective. I couldn't it's see a, Mayo uh, backing down from a challenge uh, a best, of Dublin a, and Crow Park. But and, that's the best we play well. A, after Dublin, they're the, most, uh, they're the team that visits to play in Crow Park most often mm. after that and they're most familiar with it and they have a very, very good record. So. I think it depends on the county. It would be very, very interesting, for instance, if Kildare win their way through to the Super 8 and it's Roscommon they, they beat. It's just say they win tonight and they play Roscommon and they have a home fixture in the third round qualifiers, uh, the third round of the uh, All-Ireland quarterfinal series and they have a home fixture. What happens then? And it's against Dublin. So it's an interesting... Uh, Newbridge or nowhere. Oh, no, no. <laughs> T-shirts printed, they get another run out of them yet. So it, it sounds as though we're all probably guilty of not reading the fine print when these things go through Congress and then two weeks beforehand it comes into focus, there's a bit of an outrage, but I think there'll be a bit of, I think there will be trial I think there will be trial and error with the way this this maps out over the next few weeks. And certainly I would think there will be a review of the provincial champions not having home venue first time out. Mm. Yeah, and it's not about getting perfection. You know, you need to have a, a proper structure, but there is the the, the, the age old um, GA term is Fogra. The note if the note was put in that it was determined by the CCC um, committee to say home advantage is not a guarantee if two Division One teams clash or if crowd capacity, if demand um, outweighs um, the, the, the ground. Yeah. You want to yourself, it's not about... I think we ha in, in GEA terms and context, everyone needs to be kept happy. That's not, that's not going to happen. Um, and there's, it's a whole new world for all of us to super eight. And I think we, we, there's going to be things that need to be tweaked, need to be got right. But again, it's like everything else. It, there's the, f the, the, the games have got to start talking for themselves rather than everything in the, in the preamble to it. What's going to happen then this evening in Newbridge? It's a hard one to call. I mean, 
If you look at the team that Mayo have picked, their midfield of Stephen Cohn and Jeremy O'Connor, uh, they're giving away a big height advantage on Kevin Feely and Tommy Mulek. And Kildare have traditionally, so far this year, gone long into the middle of the field. So I don't see that changing. So there's going to be a big scramble for ball around the middle third. And I mean, Lee Keegan, Colin Boyle, you know, the two Durkins, Kevin McLaughlin, you know, they will love the breaking ball situation. They will scrap hard and, and move and move well with it. Uh, but then Kildare, you know, have really good players. Like they have some cracking minor under twenty one teams from the last few years. Brian Murphy's brought them through. They're all there. Kildare were unlucky in a lot of their league games this year. Very, very unlucky. They only lost a few by a couple of points. Uh, what about the defeat to Carlo though? It's only yeah, four or five weeks ago at this stage. It was can a you turn around that quickly? But sure you can. Sure, look, Mayo had a big defeat to Galway too, and I mean they've shaken themselves it's off. There's a bit of a difference back. between losing to Galway and losing to Carlo. Well, you know, that's a bit unfair now on, on, on Carlo. I mean, well, go, but Galway are all Ireland contenders. contenders yeah, yeah <coughs> uh, but we still have a lot to do. To Carlo, no, I know that. But I'm, you did defend them. So. You did. I'm only putting you on the spot. <laughs> um, you know, really, look. Kildare didn't show up properly in their minds against Carlo. Carlo had their homework done 100% from, from shots. It was one of them days. It was a bad day at the office. Every team has them. They've moved on. They've grinded out great results. Kevin Feely is an exceptional player. The, the big thing for me, if Kildare are to win tonight, they don't have as many scorers, potential you know, good scorers, that Mayo do. Now, people will say, well, Mayo, that's, they can't score a lot either. Yeah. But... Kildare are relying on the two Flins up front, and then their next best scorer is probably Kevin Feely. You know, so there's a midfielder who takes all their frees, and then the two Flins. Paddy Brophy hasn't regained, you know, he's a great player. Uh, he, he, could, he could shoot five or six points this evening. He mightn't get a sniff of the goal at all. So Mayo possibly have that stronger edge when it comes to scoring. Um, but it's just a fascinating game. I mean, the Kildare lads, they're going to be so hungry for it, but Daniel Flynn needs to probably score two or three goals, in my eyes, for Kildare to win this game tonight. I, I think there's a gap for Kildare to make up on the league match earlier this year. Now, both sides weren't really going that well at the time, and mm. Mayo ended up winning well, and they played a qualifier game up in McHale Park two years ago, and the gap was just as great then. So on that basis, there looks to be uh, a bit of a gap between them, obviously. Um, I think Feely's a key player as well. Uh, <clears throat> I think Kildare will get a lot from the two games, winning two games away. Owen Begg is not the easiest place to go to. Derry have a very good qualifier record there. <coughs> and Longford uh, is not the easiest place to go to, as quite a few teams have discovered in, in recent years. Uh, Longford are, are pretty good uh, at home there. And I think the manner of Kildare's win the last day, they came late and managed to scrape a win and that was a lot for the confidence uh, notwithstanding the events of earlier this week I think they would have gone into a game in Mayo against Mayo if everything was quiet they would have gone in with brimming with quiet confidence that they can really really perform but Mayo are so used to this atmosphere they're so used to being uh, cornered in many ways I'm not suggesting they're going to be cornered tonight I think they'll win I think they're a hardened, experienced team that knows how to get the job done. We saw that in Tipperary. Obviously, they got a bit of a break. Uh, Parsons, Tom Parsons and Seamus O'Shea, two more bodies in the long term. That's, long that's term, a major... I yeah. think. How, how, how well Tom Parsons played for them last year. Yeah. And obviously, Seamus O'Shea makes a contribution in, in bursts and he's a very good link player. Um, so is this a very good test then, actually, for Jeremy O'Connor and Stephen Cohen going up against Feely and Mulek that maybe Stephen Rochford gets a bit of a sense heading towards, uh, without taking anything for granted, he heading towards Super 8 as to whether th those two are up for it or whether he needs to look at something else? Um, it, it's, it's, it's a major opportunity. I'll tell you one thing about this evening that's going to happen. If you leave here at 20 to 6, there's not a, there's, <laughs> not, there's not a chance you're going to make Newbridge. I don't know how you have what? that in your mind. Google Maps says 45 minutes. Yeah, look at... Hey, Wouldn't lie hey, to me. Hey, not when you have 2,500 George down there. <laughs> not if you're and David Brady and can't find your car. <laughs> <laughs> that's another story. Um, it's a major opportunity for Mio to cement, and I don't think that's going to be your midfield parent. Okay. Um, I, I think it's it's there for for the sake of it. Uh, Aiden is going to have to play a major role because you have you have a very limited height um, disadvantage. You have a height disadvantage, especially against the uh, the Kildare midfield. But for me, with Flynn and full forward, 
definitely, without a doubt, and Tipperary did it, and they got reward for it. They're going to target the Mayo full back line. Uh, I know that Paddy Durkin was marking Quinlan for long parts of it. Did very well, but they, they struggled under the high ball. And I think, again, it's, they're going to be singled out for that this evening. And, and that's two years ago, two years ago, Feely actually went into full forward uh, yeah. at the end at the end of that game and caused a lot of trouble. When they need, and, when they were st- when they were just throwing caution to the yeah, wind, but I think and and, yeah. and did damage, and it took Aidan O'Shea to go back and stand in front of him that night to be able to uh, to guard against it, and maybe that was the precursor for what Aidan O'Shea did against uh, Kerry last year with Kieran Donaghy. But that night, Feely was the one player that caused uh, caused Mayo trouble both from kickouts and then when he went into midfield and uh, I think again he's a key player and also Daniel Flynn uh, John has mentioned him he did superb league they lost every game and yet Daniel Flynn came up with goals against Mayo he came up against goals against Dublin Donegal and six points against Kerry it was a really really good good return for a player that was playing on a team that was so routinely beaten. For, for me, James Durkin is, is, is a major, major advantage and the back door, the qualifiers, has been a, 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 a blessing in, disgui- in disguise for the likes of him. Um, for anyone who hasn't seen him, what type of player is he? You know, someone said to me, you want to start talking down, or talking up Durkin. But from what I have seen him, uh, of him, um, I think he's one of the, the, the more complete footballers that may all, uh, and he will, he has serious, serious potential, whether it's Pace, speed, but his natural scoring ability is fantastic. He's he is he's electric on the ball, and his 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 pace, yes, is a, is a major major asset. He's a lot to learn. He came on in the last ten minutes of a Connacht final in the most competitive championship, um, provincial championship, uh, himself and Keane Hanley, with not one second of intercounty experience in his life, and you're going. Bit, I, I think it was a, it was a bit too much to ask. I think it was a bit unfair. Mm. But the qualifiers now have given him the little platform. Keen Hanley. But it obviously I, begs the question. So Keen Hanley, Hanley understandable, was coming back from Australia as to why Durkin wasn't playing during a league campaign. That's that's the whole thing. And you're going, is it, why why are these guys and the likes of Connor Loftus again um, on the periphery? You're going. This is this is the opportunity to give them confidence because Andy Andy is not is not um, is not firing on the same spark. Um, and again, as the championship comes on, goes on, uh, hopefully he will. But he's not firing on the same spark. And um, Jason Doherty is is playing is playing outstanding football and always has. He's probably one of the most underrated players on in the Mayo panel for a long time. But they need that little bit. The, the, but the problem I have is that the Mayo forwards have not been challenged. They have not been challenged from the sideline or from the subs bench. And again, you're going, it takes two to tango. Yes, you have to have the guys come on performing. But week in, week out, the same core forwards are starting. I think the, the, winning, the winning in the game from a Mayo point of view, in my eyes, is their half-back line. Because Kildare have picked a very defensive half-forward line. The two Cribbins and Fergal Conway are probably, well, definitely Keith Cribbin and Conway are natural defenders. Conway would be a great number six. Um, and you know Owen Doyle, their captain, is a fantastic captain. He's probably a better cornerback. Um, so if Kildare back off and allow the Mayo half back line up the field, that's a problem straight away mm. for for uh, Kildare. But the changes in midfield for Mayo does is that likely to affect how the half back line play? No, be, well, like Stephen Cohen, I think it could slot in centre back. Uh, Le- Colin Boyle Le- is, Le- is Le- struggling Le- for me. Colin Boyle is not. Just, you know, he's played so much football. I think he's lost a half yard. Now, half yard doesn't sound much, but at this level, it's a lot. So I think Stephen Cohn could play centre-back and Aidan O'Shea could go to midfield. Look, Lee Keegan could play half-back, but like a midfielder. Lee's going to go in midfield. So out midfield, out Lee Keegan, Aidan O'Shea? Um, interchanging. Yeah, I wouldn't interchanging, put... Interchanging, yeah. 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 And that's the way they work. They work on a cycle, and whether it's, you know, it's it's Paddy Durkin on the half-back line with Cullum, who, all in fairness, didn't have his best game the last year, but he's going to be a core a core part of it. Yeah. And you know what, when the, when the going gets tough tonight, um, he's one man that I'd love to see staying on the pitch. The one thing I've learned from this conversation is that we've, we've a future Kildare manager over here to our left, though. That's what he was telling us, yeah. yeah. And I'm just was, looking at his notes here, and it's like something you'd see in NASA, yeah. in a, in a he, NASA yeah. manual. Johnny, John, uh, give us the good, give uh, us oh yeah. the good stuff then. Team formations, Kildare team formations yeah. written in here. Lots of arrows, lots of lots of uh, lots of tactics. I'm looking so at all the Sigurdsson and players. <laughs> that, that <laughs> and, and, the, and the way and the way he's talked about Kildare there, the way he's been moving the team around. Uh, I have no doubt that if results go against Kildare tonight and there is a new management, I know how I'll have top of the list. <laughs> Glenn Ryan will be top of the list. But definitely the Kildare full back line, they're very, very good players. Like David Hyland or Grady Kelly, like they love marking. 
um, Killian O'Connor, you know, Doherty and Andy. So that's why my fear for good Kildare... Man markers. Yeah, they're good man markers. So my fear for Kildare is if they're half forward line, you know, don't play as natural half forwards a lot of the time. You're just allowing Mayo to attack. And Mayo showed the last day against Tipperary. They can score from around the D. They don't need to carry it all the way in. And there's such a big gap then all the way up to Daniel Flynn. Mm. The other thing is, if you look at Kildare last year against Dublin, when they got their two goals, it was high diagonal balls in that Brophy can catch, that Flynn can catch, that Tommy Muley can feel he can move in. I don't know why Kildare don't play a little bit more of that. Yeah. They don't need to carry it all the way up. You know, Kerry did it successfully a few years ago with the big men they had. Mm. Like it's, it, There's goal opportunities for Kildare there. Now people say it's route one, but I mean... If it works. If it works, it works. Fe- Feely can do that really George. well. Ke- Kevin Feely can do that. Yep. He's a superb catcher of the ball. Now more, for, more from kickouts maybe than from balls delivered in that are dropping a little bit quicker that don't hang. But still, he is, he's a threat around the, uh, around the box, around the full forward line. He's, he's, there's no one that is a threat. But I think one issue for Mayo is still discipline. I think losing players to black cards, red cards, we saw it the last, they saw it in the Connacht Championship match against Galway. What does it uh, suggest? Is it, does it suggest the obvious that there's a, an inner frustration? That well, number one, they're a hard-hitting the team that leaves, their, that leaves bodies and arms and everything in, and that they, 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 do, they certainly don't hold back. But there's obviously, in, in certain cases, there's been elements of frustration there too. There is no doubt that when you look at some of the challenges that have gone in and from the players that have committed those challenges there's a degree of frustration there but more so they are a hard hitting team that goes over the edge sometimes John just going back to what you're talking about there with the Kildare half forward line and who knows if you do find yourself in that position over the coming years you'll find yourself in these type of games coming up against a team that's seen as one of the top four or five in the country all Ireland contenders and how you play your own game but how you counter the opposition. Do you want Kildare to go out and play their own game or do you spend, do you think actually with Mayo we gotta, we got to throw our usual tactics out the window and come up with a special game plan for this? Well, well it's, it's knockout football, so they have to go at it as hard as they can. And, and you know, the one thing where Mayo have showed a little bit of vulnerability over the years is you know, if you go at them hard from the start and press up on them, don't allow David Clark, you know, the ball, especially now that Mayo don't have their natural midfielders on show, this is a great chance for for Kildare, push up, let's kick it out around the middle, we've got the bigger men, let's have a bit of confidence in ourselves that we can clean, you know, clean the ball. It's a mark. Then they can set up whatever way they want. Um, I really do think Kildare have to go at them. They have leaked a lot at the back, there's no doubt. So Fergal Conway is naturally going to drift back there. But like the, they have some, like Johnny Byrne can attack up the field. Um, so he's a good half back. Like, he, like he's for... Kildare, what Keegan is for Mayo, like, you know, so, look, everything has to go right for Kildare, they have to go for goals, they're going to have to have a little bit of lady luck on their side, and that's why I think they shouldn't be afraid to try something more tonight than they've never done before, which is a lot more long diagonal balls yeah. in, I mean, you it's pick, worth it. Yeah, like. You pick one or two weaknesses that you see in the opposition, and then you concentrate on 80% of your own strength and say, we have to perform what we're good at, but we also pay, try and pick holes. And it feels strange when you're looking at that Mayo team that the fullback line of Higgins, Barrett, and Cafferkey, I know Harrison is missing, but that suddenly that's starting to look like a bit of a weakness in this Mayo team. <sighs> you know what? Uh, and again, maybe that's that half a yard catching up in an awful lot of these players. Um, you know what Keith is doing? I'm, I'm, I'm Keith is, is, has a whole new freshness to him since he uh, missed the entire has, league and yeah. he comes back straight in and he's Mayo's, uh, Mayo's, arguably Mayo's best player and against, the, the, uh, guy against missed, Galway. the guy that missed the league last year was Aidan O'Shea and he had a phenomenal a phenomenal um, championship campaign. It's the bit of freshness that Keith has. Chris is com- coming back from a long term injury. Um, I, I, by all what I'm hearing is that Brendan Harrison is uh, is going to make is going to be involved in some shape or form this right. season, which is good. Like you have a lot of the returning. Um, you don't be you don't be long. This is this is this is the trap door for me. This is the, the, your one. I don't. I think whoever comes out of the four qualifiers this weekend will possibly be in a very good place to do a clean sweep uh, and beat the the four provincial losers. This is a major major game because you're only one step then away from from the super race. But it's 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 a banana skin. Um, it's it's it's. There's going to be the, you, you. I don't care who you are. Whenever you play me, oh, you have a chance. Whether it's your Durries or your Corks or your Kildares of this world, you'll always have a chance because that's the way we all play. There's a big opportunity for Clare or Armagh to, uh, to reach the Super 8s here because given, given the teams that are uh, lining up in the provincial, coming from the provincial losers section, uh, the winners of this afternoon's game in Armagh... Is that potentially the tightest of the four? 
It is, I yeah. think. Yeah, I yeah. I think it, I think it would be. I think it would be the tightest. I think home advantage gives gives our mass something. And, and we were just saying outside, it's ironic that Clare have to concede home advantage to Armagh, but they're the yeah, they're the guidelines. The Division Three the, teams get home division advantage. Three, you would division never, one you would have never thought over, you know, and uh, historically that Clare would have to seed home advantage to uh, to Armagh in that in that respect. But uh, that's that's the way they draw. But this is a very decent Clare team. They have some yeah. really really good footballers. Owen Cleary and Jamie Malone, and obviously their midfield with, with Gary Brennan, they're really, really strong. So uh, you give them every chance. We're going to be going up to the Athletic Grounds in around 10 minutes' time. We're going to check in with Aaron Kernan ahead of that game between Armagh and Clare, which throws in at 3 o'clock. They're just getting underway in Carrick and Shannon in the game between Leitrim and Monaghan. A couple of changes for Monaghan. Desi Ward and Thomas Kerr in for Vinnie Corrie and Jack McCarron. One change for Leitrim, James Mitchell on for Alan Armstrong. Fleetrum a hope in hell of causing an upset. You know what? It was great to see them in their in their the, to get their victory in the mm. qualifier. But um, I'm just saying now myself and Johnny we're, we're 20 years men's on this road, but to, to, to be in that searing heat today in the season, it's like what is it, 26, 27 degrees. It's it's a major ask for for any team, and I think how how teams cope with it today, it's going to it's going to have a major influence. You're going to be looking. You have to have fresh legs coming on. Uh, I don't know have Leitrim got the got the panel numbers, but I um you know what down in Carrick, um the little bit of siege mentality. There's a lot of positivity after their their, their qualifier win. I think um I think you know what. If there's one, if there's one upset, I think it could be very, very, very close in Carrick. And that's the one thing I love about David Brady is he convinces himself of anything just by talking for ninety seconds. <laughs> I have you to say, you started that. You started that. with, started that with and, Mon, I think with Monaghan, we're going to win by about fifteen points. No, but then, no, 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 dreamer. I, I, you know what? And I'll continue to. There's dream. another word for that dream. It's you know? <laughs> <laughs> a family show, isn't it? <laughs> uh, Cavan against Tyrone, then, is the five o'clock game. Forgotten in all this mess that they're uh, out of Crow Park as well. We're all expecting Tyrone to do the job. Cavan got the suspensions overturned this, last week. You know, the two. Uh, McVitie's been a really, really good player, real orchestrator for them. We saw that during the league. He was one of the best players in the league. Um, they ha you know, they've been, they haven't been. That was a disappointing performance. Like Cavan would have expected to beat a down team coming out of a, a bad Ulster Championship defeat. They would have expected to beat them far more convincingly than, than they did. So that's that's a concern for them. I saw them against uh, Donegal, and I thought they were they were pretty poor in Bally Buffet. I expected more from them, having gone back up. And I think we're seeing that Division Two of the league at the moment is 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 poor. And that the gap between Division One and Division Two is probably is no doubt greater than any any of the other divisions, and uh, that's panned out in how some of the some of the teams that have played in Division Two this year how much they were beaten by. What's the score in the Leitrim morning game? A point apiece. Hey, I'm not too far wrong yet. Oh, there's, two, <laughs> there's two minutes <laughs> gone. <laughs> there's two minutes gone. Twenty-one to be about twenty-one points. I would have to say I that optimism for, for Leitrim, but. You have to think of the, the only way us Mayo men can go on yeah. through life. <laughs> Just on Monaghan though, like like Monaghan to me have fantastic players, but uh, you know you just look at the Monaghan team that goes out every day, and you kind of wonder why he changes it so much, or why he doesn't have to me some of the best players on the pitch all the time. Uh, and I think if if Monaghan can just settle on a team and just let them at it, and um, they have a real chance of uh, making the Super 8s. Um, but they seem to constantly chop and change and chop and change. And I know horses and for yeah, courses. I've probably seen a lot more of, the, of Conor McCarthy than, than, than anyone. And, you know, Conor McCarthy's a really, really good I would have thought he should be in here all the time. But uh, he's, he's kept in reserve quite a bit. The GA ultimately may get probably the eighth that they almost wanted for these Super 8s if the draw goes along expected lines and they'll get Tyrone, Monaghan and Mayo through the Super 8s. Maybe Roscommon are the best of the best of the losing provincial finalists, that we may actually get some pretty tight games, some, some cracking games in the yeah, Super I'm not eights. so sure. I mean, I think if one of them fell by the wayside or two, I, I still think uh, Roscommon and Armagh could, could bring something to it. I don't know, but they could improve as time goes on. Uh, they would certainly, you know, would Armagh be that uh, put out by having to play Monaghan in a, in a qualifier, in a fourth round qualifier? Mate? Probably not. No. Is it, it's an open draw, is it on? Except for repeat pairings. So well, no, it's a, yeah, but the third round qualifiers play the beaten provincial finalists and they can't have any repeat pairings right. aside from that. Yeah. So. I think Leash um, still have a little bit to offer. Um, they have some really good players. Um, it was just very surprising the last day that 
the, their forwards didn't support their two main ball winners up front, I mean, they might have got a little bit closer to Dublin if, if they'd done that. So I think there's still a kick and leash. Uh, they're very well united down there. Lots of good footballers. And, and I think, uh, you know, they, could be, they would be my surprise inclusion for the Super okay. 8s. Uh, lots of texts coming in to 53106. Last two league defeats for Dublin both in Crow Park, Monaghan this year, Kerry last year, so maybe not as unbeatable as some people are saying on home soil. Uh, Garth Doherty tweeting in saying, Dublin say that they love travelling. It's one thing playing Carlo Leash or Wicklow at a neutral venue, an entirely different thing playing Kerry, Mayo, Galway, Donegal to Rome in a quarterfinal in a neutral venue. I guess, Colm, the only point you would say to that is Dublin don't have any real influence in this. It's not as if they're saying going up in Congress well unless we they, if, they're, if it's put to them that uh, well it's your home venue where do you well, where the, do, what, very what, surprising what? if Dublin says well actually yes our home venue we'd like to take it down to Thurlis uh, but what, what about that we spoke about that at the start what if actually everyone held their hands up and said let's be honest here Crow Park is Dublin's home venue yes it's still the home of the GEA it's our national stadium but it's also Dublin's home ground would that be palatable I don't know. I think you know there seems to be a mood to, uh, around the country that Dublin should, uh, you know, Dublin should be moved out of there. But these are Crow Park games, and until you change that rule, which I imagine will but happen, but not just next for year. this for this year's Super Eights, just for the future. If there was an acceptance that actually Dublin's home ground is not Parnell Park, it is Crow Park. Well, Dublin are trying to get their own ground. Um, going for the last number of years, to be fair to them. I mean, um, we thought it was going to be Abbottstown. Obviously, it's not now. They are looking. I don't know. Colin might know if they're planning in for. I, I don't think they're looking at an intra county stadium, John. I mean, okay. I don't think. I don't. So redevelopment think, at Spawell in Temple Oak. Yeah, but I don't think that's going to be. Uh, that, and I don't think. I don't think they're looking at that in terms of uh, an intra county stadium. Games. I think they're very happy with the arrangements to go into Crow Park and uh, play the league games there. And after that, they don't really have a have a call on it. Look at the big answers, they're of a golden era, and there's a time when they won't be winning games. And they'll be losing games and championship games in Crow Park, whether it's this year or next year. Or, but it's, 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 I think it's, 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 it's where they play, and that's, that's, it's long may it continue. Lads, the traditional cry was that all GEA players wanted to represent their county in Crow Park. Now Kildare has sullied that and meant a great doubleheader with Tyrone against Cavan could not proceed, denying many fans. Kildare a disgrace. I hope Mayo thumped them, says Damien, a Tyrone man in Dublin. Which is uh, another way of looking at it. <laughs> Possibly. Uh, Mayo should have said... He was obviously the, looking to go... He was looking forward to going to Coppers tonight, that Tyrone. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Mayo should have said, we'll play in Kildare, but as usual, they didn't have the balls. Hope Kildare win, they deserve it. It didn't. It Mayo was, just it kept went, quiet. But you know, it was nothing to do with Mayo. And it was nothing to do with Stephen Rochford. And they're going, what have we do? We'll say what? It's, it's nothing. Um, if Mayo, Mayo should have shown a little bit of balls back when the, the game was nominated for uh, the All-Ireland semi-final down in Limerick. Maybe the stakes was too high at that stage, but imagine if it was, and 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 if the manager did come out on on the Monday before and saying we're not going to a provincial venue when it's a monster venue and it's a venue where Kerry have played numerous champions games and and won monster titles, it's either Crow Park or nowhere. That your manager of Mayo, Dave, you can you will make that stand. <laughs> Mayo Mick wouldn't have had his moment and, though. Uh -huh. Mayo Mick, no, the ball, the ball, the ball is going to Newbridge as well. Michael, <laughs> there's no turnstile big enough for him. Yeah. We're two and a half thousand shorts, which is. Uh -huh. uh, Michael Bublé due to play in Crow Park on evening when they would have played around four double header over the last few years. I think they would have budgeted for a qualifier double header in Crow Park and Kildare got shafted as a result. There have been no round three games in Croker in recent years. Important detail not considered, says John in Cork. And lads, I'm sick to death of this upside down logic regarding Kildare because of their in Tringency, the main stakeholders, the fans have been treated appallingly, says Alfie. Um, well, I, I agree with Alfie. Wanted, I think. Yeah. You, what do you think? Well, that's the a decision, Kildare. I mean, we won't go back to what we said at the start. They had to weigh up, do we want uh, all our supporters who want to go to see this game or do we want a home venue that gives us an advantage and that supports our town and our stadium and everything else like that? And it's the siege They mentality. made that decision and it was their entitlement. Siege mentality and they've got what they, they, got what they asked for now that the... the the football is going to do the um, do the talking. And finally, if these are the Crow Park fixtures, then Dublin and Donegal should be played in Crow Park, but Dublin's home game should be in Parnell Park and their away game should be in the home venue of their opponent. The GA switched Dublin's home games to Crow Park, not the Dublin County Board. And I guess, Colin, that goes down 
to the point you were saying at the start as well, that if we want money to come into the GEA that can be put back out again, there's no way a Dublin final round qualifier that could have 70, 75,000 uh, people at it. That is, that, is, that is the unpalatable reality that if you're talking about redeveloping stadia and building grounds and all of that, well then certainly the GEA needs some revenue streams that have to stay flowing. And in that regard, it's, it's a double-edged sword, but it has to be done if you're going to do that. You are not going to get it on fundraising and state grants alone. You need money coming centrally from what is, you know, what are the, the, the jewels in the crown uh, revenue raising, and that is the inter-county game. Whether, whether we like it or not, it has to raise some money to be able to support every other strand of the game. One last one. Brady fancies <laughs> Leitrim, put the life savings on Monaghan. <laughs> Which is fair enough. Uh, Monaghan are leading that game now, three points to two. Uh, Leitrim just missed a great goal chance, though, two. David, you'll be glad to hear. Yeah. But uh, Conor McManus, one from play, one free, and Conor McCarthy, point from play, has given Monaghan a 3 2 lead. There's around 12, 13 minutes gone in that one. Uh, thanks a lot for coming Hello. in, lads. Enjoy the game. Uh, enjoy Newbridge. I will hopefully see you there for the, six. For the yeah, second yeah, half. Yeah, for the final by, the, by the sounds of it, I'll be there for the glory, hopefully, at the, at the very very end. Uh, we are going to go to our man next. We're going to hear from Aaron Kernan. Uh, we also have Dave up at the game between Cavan and Tyrone and more Trass is down in Newbridge. So we'll be across there for the afternoon. Hurling to come between three and four and Declan Boner from four o'clock. But we'll take a quick break. Off the ball on News Talk. The Picture Show. This Saturday, English sitcom royalty director Mandy Fletcher will join us to tell us about her new movie, Patrick, the story of an adorable pug who 